little video about handheld gaming. Got one of these for my uh, nephew a little while ago, Switch Lite. I was actually waiting for the Switch Pro that never came out, so I got this thing. And uh, paid like 110 quid for it. Probably paid another 100 quid for some games and the memory card and all the rest of it. Barely play it. I've literally played it like two and a half hours, three hours maybe in over a year. My nephew's mum didn't allow him to have it. You know, at five years old, apparently he's too young for a Nintendo Switch in games. She's a socialist and her boyfriend's a socialist, or they're actually communists really, but they, they call themselves socialists. So ownership isn't a thing. He's not allowed that. And, uh, you know, I, I've ended up with it. So anyway, that's a separate rant. So my point is the Switch sucks. I bought it for him because he asked for it. All his friends had one, and for that age group, it was like the big, you know, the big great thing that everyone wanted. So I got him one because of that. But since he wasn't allowed it, I ended up just using it for myself. So I thought, you know, I'm a bit of a gamer. I've got quite a lot of PC game interest, and I used to like Nintendo stuff when I was younger. So I'll give it a go. And I can honestly say I'm not even going to bother doing a full review on this Switch because I'll just tell you it's underpowered, really, really, really underpowered. Uh, the selection of games sucks, there's barely any good games for it, and it costs a fortune. Literally everything that I've tried on there that I've barely played has cost a fucking fortune. So yeah, handheld gaming, don't go for Nintendo. Nintendo are terrible at the moment, so unless you're like a fanboy and you just need to have Nintendo stuff. They've been going downhill for ages, so let's leave them behind. Um, there's loads of other stuff out there at the moment. There's like a, a Retroid Pocket 3, that looks cool. It's just, in fact, you know what? Retroid Pocket 3 looks like the middle bit from here, but smaller and better with less buttons on it. And the difference is between that thing and the Retroid Pocket is the Retroid Pocket doesn't lock you in to a, an ecosystem like that thing does. And you're not going to spend fortunes on all your games. You can download some emulate, uh, you know, emulators for free, play all your old classic games for nothing, provided you've got the ROMs or... You know, you can download them from somewhere. If you've ever owned the game, you own that ROM, so you can download it and legally play that. So you've got those games, you've got your Android games on there, and I think there's actually plans to make it Windows compatible in future, so it hasn't got that at the moment, but that's planned in future. So, um, you know, that beats the Switch straight away. Then you have your actual Windows compatible uh, devices, like you've got your GED, Two or GP2 or something, it's like a little laptop and you open it up, really really small one and it's actually got little, it's like got like a controller built into it so that's like the Retroid Pocket 3 but on uh, steroids it's just bigger, way more powerful, plays absolutely anything and it does have Windows installed on there so a bit more expensive but that's better than the Switch and then finally the piece de resistance of handheld gaming is obviously the Steam Deck isn't it? Yes, it is. The Steam Deck's great. I love it. I haven't got one. I wish I'd bought one. Um, but I wouldn't have taken it out of the box. I wish I'd bought one for the collection value, right? A Steam Deck 1, the top spec one, inside a box. If you keep that for 50 years and let your your children or you know someone who will inherit it sell that, it's going to jump in value. It'd be worth a lot. So wish I'd bought one for that. But I'm glad I didn't buy one for gaming because I think Steam Deck 2 is just around the corner. Yes, it is. Anyone who disagrees is not thinking about it, right? They lose money on each Steam Deck they sell, and they recoup that money on people consistently buying games and DLCs and memberships and whatever. So they lose money on day one, and then drip, drip, drip over the time you use the device, you buy all this stuff, and it makes them profit. But there's a problem. And the problem is the Steam Deck 1, although it's great for its size, it's not powerful enough to continue to be a sales platform in the next six months to a year to 18 months to two years. It just is not, right? And the proof of that is pick a modern game, Cyberpunk, for instance, is a good one, and try and run that on Steam Deck 1, right? What you'll find is you're limited to 30 frames per second on low settings at 800p or 900p at most, and you're still not going to get a perfectly smooth experience running that game at the, the basic settings at a reduced resolution. So, um, you know, judging by that, if games are going to get progressively more taxing and need more power, then, you know, the Steam Deck 1 has got a limited shelf life. or It's got a limited shelf life for new games. So then if you buy a Steam Deck 1, you're going to be playing old games. So it would make sense, therefore, over Christmas to announce a Steam Deck 2 and have it available by next spring. And that is the one that I think people should buy. I definitely recommend waiting for Steam Deck 2 to come out and then throwing a load of money at that because that is going to be Zen 4.
from AMD. So it's going to be really powerful. It is going to have the ability to play new games going forward, probably for, for a year or more, which none of these other handhelds have got. And, um, you know, it's, it's still going to be competitively priced, I think. It's still going to be a, a, a loss-making venture for Steam to sell the thing, provided you don't go and buy a load of games. But you will. That's what I think. If Steam Tech 2 comes out and the performance is as creamy as they say it's going to be, everyone who buys one is going to be really motivated and encouraged to spend tons of money on games and DLCs and, and whatever else they're going to do. So, yeah. Uh, how, how are we doing? Five and a half minutes. Long enough for this video. So, yeah. Steam Deck 2 is the way to go. Steam Deck 1, good for collectors, but you kind of missed the boat on that. I'd wait for Steam Deck 2 if you haven't already got one. Forget about Nintendo Switch. And if they bring out a Switch 2, a Switch Pro, a Switch Classic, or whatever kind of Switch they bring out, just no, because they're just underpowered and rubbish. And you've got your Retroid Pocket, you've got your Ambernic machines as well, which are really good. They're quite cheap. You can get them for like 50 quid, 100 quid, depending on the model. But everything... Um, mobile or handheld gaming is going to be Steam Deck 2. So that's the end of this video. Look out for those and uh, see you in the next one.